Yeah, it's all about building that resume, Sloan. It's all about finishing strong in this end stretch of February. A couple of the best shot blockers in the Big Ten. Going at it at the jump, and it is Michigan State basketball to begin. Michigan State wearing black, Indiana wearing special Black History Month uniforms. Going to work is A. Ralt underneath their zone for the finish. And I love that with Michigan State. They're going to continue to be relentless in their attack in the paint. And A. Ralt playing out of position. She's been doing so well at the five spot on this versatile Michigan State team. Indiana easily gets it over. Coach Moran will be watching for how her team responds. She felt like against the pressure of Ohio State, they were too sped up so they were traveling four passes on the other side once they got into the front court here's darkest starting things off her fifth straight start with sydney parrish still on the bench out indefinitely with a foot injury and bargaster she's a facilitator a little timid on her shot so i think this is great to see her step up and knock it down early off the jump teams have been sagging against her and she's been looking for those opportunities to make them pay does right there And to shoot for A. Waltz. Moving from the perimeter, the spin move beautifully done. And this is exactly what I said in the open. You talk about Indiana's defense. They are going to be tested, their perimeter defense. A. Waltz, so versatile. Garza drains the three. She has been lights out, hit three late to make it a two possession game against Ohio State. Lethal beyond the yard. Yeah, did I mention Indiana's got some versatility too, some size around the perimeter. Garazone able to knock down the three. Almost a turnover, great save by Kimball. As Moira Joyner goes right at Barkasser and keeps it alive. Backdoor cut, Kimball. This team high efficient after high efficient shots. You see the press here coming. Only more McNeil, nine turnovers in two games combined. Easily gets it up ahead to Bargesser, who had a clear path to the rim. I love that, the aggression initially from Bargesser. Dee Hageman, unstoppable when she gets that kind of downhill speed. This is the type of game that you love. You love offense. You're going to see a lot of possessions, a lot of points going both ways. Still can't Here take a breath just yet, Asia. Another three for the Hoosiers. We're not slowing down. Not at all. And Scalia, one of the top in the league in three-point percentage. 20-plus points, four of her last five in the absence of Sydney Parrish. Here's Tate trying to post up last year's Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Mac transfer getting it done. Indiana smoothly, calmly getting it over. We know Michigan State can switch up that press. Going from player to player, to zone, any number of formulations. Mackenzie Holmes, graceful. Mackenzie Holmes, impossible to guard one-on-one -on -one defense. You'll see Michigan State there. They're going to sag in. They're going to pinch from the guard position, but it can't be done alone. Abby Kimball will drive and kick. She moves the ball so well, and then you have a finisher like uh, Joyner. Joyner so dynamic in her offensive attack. She can shoot it from the outside. We talked about it, but so strong and aggressive on her attack in the paint as well. Mackenzie Holmes quickly didn't quite have the angle. Here's Hageman roping along the baseline. a -Rolt, she can stroke it and does. This is what Michigan State does so well. They attack the paint, they kick it, they find shooters. They have that versatility around the arc. Quick little jump shot. Barkasser making things happen quickly, finding homes. An incredibly hot start for both teams. Seven of eight is Michigan State. Six of seven is Indiana. Just two missed shots to start. Ooh, you talk about efficiency, Sloan. Tate. Quick spin, and in the corner, it is Osmond knocking down the three. Yeah, Indiana, they're going to have to have their head on a swivel, scramble, get out to the shooters around the perimeter. Their zone finding Holmes with good position. She's tied up, loses it, battling is Moira Joyner. 
in that possession. Lots of green, uh, black jerseys in the paints, better off. Sarah Scalia drains the three. Moira Joyner got held up, and she was going to knock that down. Rawls keeping both teams perfect from beyond the arc. Six of six combined. Ogarra's own hedged high in the scramble back was just a little too slow for Michigan State. If they move the ball quick, those shooters are going to be open every single time. Good recovery by this Michigan State defense underneath Bargesser. Well, take a lot of pride in that side of the ball. Uh, but so far, I'm confident in saying it's all good. I know, it's gonna be a shootout. <laughs> Bargasser at the line, her fifth start in a row. Sydney Parrish still nursing that foot injury out indefinitely as Bargasser hits the second and will go to the bench. Rolts gets it out. Enjoy the first miss from long range, but it stays Michigan State basketball. Another thing Terry Moran talked about was, off, was defensive rebounding for Indiana because Michigan State, when they get on the glass on the offensive end, they are going to get a score off that second chance opportunity. And you know it's going to be a high efficient look just like they did. Sierra Scalia lighting it up from three point range. Laura Joyner, that's your partner in crime from the three-pointers. So you got to know where she is. You got to get that close out. Sarah Scalia, nine points, three for three. As Theron Halleck gets underneath the defense, she is a pest on offense and defense. And coming off the bench, giving that spark. Both her and Osmond, so tough playing starters minutes. They love the role that they play. Coach Freilich says, they speed the game up. They're not just there to give the starters a rest. And they speed the game up on both ends of the floor. Offense, pushing pace, defense, especially in their press. Holmes, time to make a move, and you get two out of it. Moore McNeil, one of the best defenders in the Big Ten on Hageman. Hayroll slowing things down. This crowd wanted to carry. Looking inside, ball on the floor, and a turnover. Scalia pushing for the Hoosiers. Holmes just rims out, but she had that deep position. Yeah, deep position, a rare miss, but gotta have help on her in the interior. Darren Halleck looked almost out of control, but you know she was in control. Exactly, and she zipped by me too, that speed. Sizing up that double team. Moore McNeil, her first look at three. Beautiful shot by Holmes. Or, excuse me, by Moira Joyner getting into the lane. The speed from the Spartans is showing. And Indiana, they're gonna have to do a better job perimeter defense, keeping their man in front of them, keeping the drives away, especially the middle drives in the paint. Indiana, meanwhile, on offense, down to 75% shooting, under 10 to shoot here. Give it go with more McNeil. Scally with two seconds left, has to throw it up. Back to the Spartans. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Since each team individually has in the game. Absolutely, because if you look at it just from a broad perspective of the game, you don't know what the flow of the game is, the possession. So both these teams getting a lot of possession. The country, you're seeing that on display. Shooting above 70% after the first 10 minutes as Indiana takes over, getting a stop to start the second quarter. Quickly kicking it back out, knowing she was surrounded. Their zone, too much daylights, but she can't knock it down. But this is exactly what Indiana needs, because lots of sucking in the paint when you have um, when you have horns in there. So other players are gonna have to step up around the perimeter and make some shots. Jocelyn Tate 
But she's been putting her head down and trying to score. Normally someone who's that versatile defender, one of the ones they count on on the defensive end, but looking for her own here to start. Dropping that one through. Michigan State dropping back its pressure. Ilana Lamondolo almost losing it along the baseline, and she does. Hageman weaving her way through so hard to follow. Holmes right in there to tip it away. She read that slip. Ready. And the Hoosiers have 10 to shoot here on offense. In the corner, La Mendola lifts a three. Take the trailer. Big jab fake, and she'll attack once more. And earn another trip to the free throw lot this season, but she's not deterred by that. Not at all. Thing we're learning about her this season. The confidence she instills in her players that they have the fearlessness to go do that. Which is so important for a player, for your coach to instill that confidence. Give and go, more McNeil. Offensive foul. <laughs> Kimball whipping it inside. Tate, undersized, she doesn't care. And back to Indiana. Scalia off the dribble. Something she's been adding to her offense recently. Gets it back. Mackenzie Holmes really trying to work inside the paint. This is what I want to see her setting some ball screens. Kind of stretch the defense out, get different looks. Ayrol picking up the foul, which is... Or McNeil orchestrating this offense, even on the floor with Barbasser, two point guards, but she is the one in command, taking that point guard mantle. Holmes sees that double, gets it back off the miss, and still Indiana ball. Skip pass. Barkasur, one dribble, pull up, and she's got it. And this is exactly what you'll see. Michigan State, they're going to sag off of her for that heavy help on Holmes. And I love it. Barkasur just steps into her shot range and knocks it down. Coach Morin says she's doing exactly what she's supposed to do, not doing too much. But teams testing her, saying, we're going to have you beat us. You have to make yourself a throw, whether it's putting yourself in a better position to score, screening away, getting other teammates open. She's already got eight points. Michigan State just in every passing lane, making everything tough. Bargasser in the paint, works around Tate, and she's got 10. Tate had all eyes on Holmes, and Bargasser just cuts in weak side. Vargas are all out efforts. Halleck pounds her way in, offensive foul. Well, defense is something they wanted to improve from that loss against Ohio State, and it is looking so good. That was the thing. Terry Moore said it wasn't just the turnovers, 23 a season high. We were doing things on defense, just not keeping people in front of us that we have to do tonight. Scalia, all kinds of Yes! Moore McNeil on the drive. Defense sucks in. Guess who's? Flashes right to the spot, fills in at the top. Scalia, you got to know where she is at all times on the floor. Hageman quiets this crowd. Michigan State, they have played Iowa on the road. They've played Ohio State on the road. You think they're scared? Absolutely. 
absolutely not. Fearless and fun. That's what they come into every matchup. That's their mindset. That's how they play. More McNeil. Beautiful pull up right in the paint. As an update, Nisha, and look at the score. Both teams shooting 65% still. We have four minutes left in the first half. The efficiency, lots of scoring going on. I'm telling you, if you like offense, I hope you're tuned in. Joyner just has that rim out, but I expect every shot that goes up to fall through with this. <laughs> Meister setting the screen for Norm McNeil. Now in the hands of Scally. Meister one on one travels. A squad as a head coach. That's when I started playing at Maryland in our Narvo season in the Big Ten. Sloan, this is a completely different Indiana squad. Indiana at 9-2 and two in Big Ten play, needing this one tonight it's on their home court. Coming off a loss against Ohio State to keep pace with the Buckeyes, with the Hawkeyes, and the Holmes now are putting Joyner back. I think maybe where Coach Morin was a little upset, maybe same with the crowd. I think it's both ways when you talk about the body, arms being used to get to your spot, arms being used defensively. Back-to-back -back foul, fouls on Hennesonvik, new into the game, trying to stick with Joyner. And that really got that Indiana bench and coaching staff fired up. Behind her head, Holmes to Moore McNeil. There we go, the patience. And that's what I love about Holmes' game. She's not a black hole in the post. She will find you when teams swarm her. She's used to this. She's going to look, and I love that cut by Moore McNeil. Wanted to see was hard cuts when Holmes has the ball, not just standing around the corner. And you do everything cutting with intention and makes a huge difference. Deep post up, but the whistle will go on Tori Osment. Comes in for Tori Osment, who just picked up her second. Joiner staying close on Scally. Trying to get free from Joyner. They go into Holmes, the double team. Perfect pass, but the finish not there. But I love that look from Indiana. Whoever, whichever player is going to double, that offensive player from Indiana needs to come. Extremely quick pace, but being called more tightly here, we're seeing more whistles and slowing things down. Tate good on the second, and Michigan State puts in its full court pressure. Comes back door, Bargesser, the quick swing, more McNeil. And A-Roll tries to keep Holmes away. Shooting well, Asia around 60%, but this pace certainly makes a difference. Absolutely, the pace makes a difference. Both teams like to push the pace. Maybe the slower pace, I think, might work more, better in Indiana's favor. Julia Arolt knocking down the three. Tremendous start for Arolt. Three of three. Moore McNeil responds right back at the rim. Moore McNeil just absolutely taking advantage, cutting every time Holmes gets the ball. Her defender is going in, doubling. Putting that pressure on home, she cuts right to the basket. Already 6.6 6 assists from Moore McNeil, the senior. Halleck retreating here to reset. And then takes off to the rim. Halleck playing with so much confidence. She's got 11 on 5 of 6 shooting. That's that dynamite off the bench. The Tegan Teen Dynamite, her and Tori Osmond as Holmes forces it up. 
practice as she heads to the free throw line, but she's also had the hockey assists tonight as well with this well-executing offense. And it works both ways, you know, with her vision as well as the player cutting. The player cutting has to make that read. If their player is going in and doubling down, they're the ones that have to go. Hageman, an electric point guard, gets herself free. My goodness. She is scary with the ball in her hand. The snatch on that pullback with the crossover. Woo. Not recovered. <laughs> Kenzie Holmes answering right back. Her kind of move. When you see number 54 facing you, you see that number plain and clear. You have your, Mackenzie Holmes has her defender behind her. It is all day. Vargas are extending her defense. a Rolls. What a half for a Rolls. Lights out coming in on fire, both teams coming into this matchup with a chip on their shoulder. Obviously, Indiana, home where they are comfortable, looking to show out in front of this crowd, redeem that Ohio State loss, and then we can talk about it all day. The Spartans come into war. Curious to see how this second half starts out. The first, exhaustive. They shot nearly 90% midway through the first quarter. Here is Holmes going to work. The patience from Holmes. You her by herself for one-on-one -on -one action, she is going to work out. Is she just guardable one-on-one -on -one at all? Hageman scoring inside on the other side. I mean, no for Holmes because regardless, you could play great defense, but she's so efficient in her finish. She's just really hard to guard. Indiana cleanly getting it over. Did that well in the first half, limiting their turnovers at a season high 23 against Ohio State their last time out. Both teams taking care of the basketball and Michigan State really taking advantage of their possessions. A rare miss on that drop step from Holmes. Gets it back to the Spartans and Joyner turns it over. Moore McNeil guarded by Hageman. Pace was also off of the charts in the first 20 minutes. Lots of touches here for Holmes. And that is what. These looks are getting to be a little too easy for Holmes, but credit Holmes, Indiana, keep pushing it in there. This is the, she is the heartbeat of their offense. a -Rolt now wants it. She'll bring it beyond the perimeter. And that's a rare miss for a -Roll. She had been four for four from long range as Joyner sprints down the floor out of nowhere for the steal. The floater doesn't fall in Scalia. Now with speed the other way. Scalia putting it on the floor, something this coaching staff likes to see. Incredible, her efficiency, the way she can work out in the paint. Michigan State able to extend their lead to 10 at the half. Keeping their foot on the gas. But Indiana, same thing happened. They got down double digits against Ohio State, brought it within four. This is an experienced team playing at home. A. Rolts, lots of time and space, and she makes the pay. So we are just waiting to see when that shot will fall. I mean, such an exciting player to watch has completely changed the game of women's basketball when we talk about viewership and drawing in those fans. This pace has kind of felt a little bit like watching Iowa. <laughs> exactly. Off the miss, it is Michigan State. Roy Joyner finds Tate going right at Garzone. Can't put it away. He's been going at the 6-3 Garzone all night. Pearl Moore McNeil finds Bargesser, takes her time. Holmes working to clean it up, but a travel first. You can't be mad at the hustle from Mackenzie Moore. 
Tate sizing up Garzon, not afraid to post her up, but this time bottled up. Joiner in trouble. Osmond and Halleck back on the floor, providing that energy, speed, and spark. Or McNeil patient here in the half court. Scalia, the step back. And staying Indiana ball. One more shot for Scalia. Hageman in trouble. As the Spartans move it around the perimeter. Indiana's doing a lot better job with their one-on-one -on -one perimeter defense. Osmond's had the angle, but it's poked away. Deep post up for Holmes, and she is fat. Two minutes. And that's significant for Michigan State. And that's a battle that they run into in a lot of these matchups because she's playing out of position. You credit her for her effort, though, but she does tend to get into a lot of foul trouble when having the banger at the post. Osmond lines up and cans the three. Vargaser looking to take it off the dribble. Ten on the shot clock for Moore McNeil, who takes a bump, finds some space, and puts it down. Absolutely biting up Moore McNeil. And Coach Moore talked about that. She said when she came into school, she was a skinny little thing. <laughs> and absolutely on that possession, showing her muscle as she worked in the paint. Literally held up a pen to Literally. illustrate her point. <laughs> Osmond, back to back. <laughs> what a player to bring off your bench in the sixth year. Or McNeil has to kick it out. Vargaser was aggressive in the first quarter, finds Garzone, rattles it through. A luxury for Coach Freilich to have. They have bought in emphatically. Halleck loses it, but staying right here. With four minutes to play in the third quarter. Both teams still shooting above 60%. Look at the bench points. Michigan State 20 compared to two. And that's been the story of both of these teams throughout the year. Alec coughs it up. More McNeil going to settle things down. Indiana on its heels a little bit. Down by 10 at the half, still trailing on their home court. They are laying off Bargesser. Five on the clock into home, scoops it up and in. There we go, that's exactly what you gotta do. You gotta have more McNeil on the side in the two-man game with Holmes. Joiner, the hesitation and the pull up taken by Moore McNeil up the floor. Bargesser and the lob goes awry. Holmes is a clear path through traffic. With Holmes, you absolutely have to do your work early. You cannot let her cut to the basket that easily. And that's all in the scouting report. McNeil off the turnover. It's a four point game. This place waiting to erupt. Scalia started four of five from three. Her range is everywhere, including a step back. Michigan State looking to settle down. 
and Halleck makes it happen. She is fearless whenever she's on the floor. That change of pace that she brings when she comes in off the bench. That's exactly what you saw right there. Take it coast to coast, girl. No one's stopping you. Take it all the way. She heard this crowd, worked right into it. More McNeil shuffles her feet to take over a program. Someone who has green blood, runs in her family. Always a spark. There, and Halleck, it just rolls out. And Indiana slowing down. More McNeil in command. Son Vick lines up a three and banks it in. <laughs> up. Seven to shoot. Hageman slippery. Three for Tate. It's a wild shot. Two second different shot in game clock. shot for Michigan State after that gear zone three. Hageman, the burst and finish. A 10 point deficit. hit a huge one at the end of the third. Ayralt trying to use her speed is bottled up, but a foul on Holmes. Good on the first. And you credit the speed of Ayralt too, because if Holmes would have beat her to the spot and got that position, I think she would have been able to wall up and have a clean block. Ayralt has got a new Big Ten high, sitting at 23 points. Her career high set earlier this season, 32. More McNeil in trouble. They have a chance to do that should they get the win tonight. And another marquee matchup coming up in their next matchup. Five to shoot for Gears Home, puts it on the floor. What was it that Coach Morin said about Garazone? She likes to hang around the perimeter, but wanted to see her more aggressive on her attack. Well, there it is right there. Back-to-back -back game, she has come up with huge late buckets. Join her with the response. I think this is key for both teams and where they've excelled and succeeded offensively today is that balance attack, paint to perimeter. Michigan State has withstood every punch from Indiana. The Hoosiers have not led since early on in the first quarter. Getting the seal is Holmes and a great feed inside for Moore McNeil. And Holmes does a great job of sealing and then resealing and being able to get that position for that flop pass. Joyner almost loses it, but earns the whistle. Hageman so quick along the baseline, just didn't have the spin. In the hands.
hands of Scalia. Feeding home. She's surrounded by three black jerseys. Kenzie Holmes, another 20-point game tonight. Named last week to the Lisa Leslie Award Top 10. You know she's one of the best centers in the game. It's her 14th 20-point game this season. Hageman gets the step, and now she'll be shooting too. That's the third on Moore McNeil. Hageman misses the second. Moore McNeil surveying, guarded by Kimball. Holmes, here comes the aggressive double team. Sarah Scalia flips it up and in. And we're tied. Teams are going to chase Scalia on the screens, on the curl because of her shooting ability. But that's next level for her, being able to attack the rim, show some dynamic to her offensive game. Rolt puts it on the floor, forces it up and in off glass. Okay, A. Rolt dribbles to the middle, sees two defenders in there, so she goes baseline where she has that one on one and just a tremendous finish. 25 points for Julia A. Rolt. Nine of 10 shooting and being guarded by Mc Mackenzie Holmes. The kick out to Scalia. Got it. Gotta know where Scalia is at all times. This is an elite sniper from beyond the arc. Holmes controlling the crowd. Osmond sleeping into the lane. Hoping a win tonight can catapult them and solidify their NCAA tournament record. Osmond misses both. More McNeil, so good at calming everyone down. Just the presence with the ball in her hands or not. Bargasser gets it back from Holmes. Seven to shoot. Garzone over her shoulder. Yeah, Garzone has the absolute size advantage in that matchup. I love it. Turn around the length. Pretty shot. A. Ralts kicks it back out. Osmond, the running floater. That's a tough shot. A tough shot, and I love that. Use your speed as the advantage. It has been so hard for Indiana to guard one-on-one -on -one with the speed that the Spartans present. Continue to be aggressive in your attack down here. A lot of courage from the Spartans in an inhospitable environment against the number 14 team in the country. They're within one. Bargasser along the baseline finds Garzone. She does it again. Zone inside out, it doesn't matter. She is showing how dynamic of a score she is. I love it. Dee Dee Hageman. 13 points tonight. And you said it, Sloan. She is a crowd silencer. Every time you build Indiana, builds momentum, she comes and makes a play on the other end. It's almost like the louder you get, the more she likes it. <laughs> Word to the wise from uh, Dee Dee Hageman next time you see them in your gym. Oh, this is going to be key for Indiana, how well they can handle this pressure. Seeking their first ranked, only really their first marquee victory of the season. Vargas are in trouble again. They turn it over out of the timeout. So they're taking more McNeil out of the play, forcing the ball to Vargas's hands and just continuing to throw that strike, stifling trap at her. They came at her in a hurry, but it opens up. Osmond just rimming out. 
Farkas are pushing it up the floor under four to play. Scalia Joyner excellently staying with her. Then the pressure comes. Holmes, mid-range. Yes. So we've seen Holmes on a pick and roll action to the basket there. Pick and pop showing her range. 26 points, 10 of 14 shooting for the All-American. Here's Joyner. This Spartan team, every time, every time. Can't celebrate an Indiana score, because then the Spartans just shush the crowd on the other end. They're back within two. Moore McNeil looking into Holmes, decides to take it herself. Osmond, numbers for the Spartans. Joiner into the chest of Scalia for two. That's huge, and that starts there with Osmond. And then just great push, great attack and transition. Way to convert by Joyner. Tied back up a costly turnover for the Hoosiers. Cutting across Garzone, free to the basket. Get caught in sleeping. Garzone just continues to work. And then a foul as Vargas served up a couple times tonight. Yeah, so Vargas are trying to hustle in there and grab the ball, and obvious there. State is in the bonus the rest of the way. The Hoosier is trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. It'd be their first to an unranked opponent. Here's the full court pressure from the Spartans. Indiana easily handling it. More McNeil looking for options. And decides on herself, backing down Hageman. That's just left short, but a foul on the ground against the Spartans going for that rebound. Absolutely, that's over the back, and you credit the position that Mackenzie Holmes got in the paint on a roll. You got a box route, you got to push her out. Have another look at it here. The drive by Moore McNeil. Sizing up in the paint, misses the shot, and just the position. Couldn't see it here, but Holmes got great, uh, great position to rebound under the basket. A whistle on Joyner, providing that defense on Scalia. It's her third. So Aralt has four, Joyner has three for the Spartans. On the other side, Moore McNeil flirting with a triple double. Eight, nine, and ten she's got. Holmes takes it all the way off the feet from Moore McNeil. They're going to see a lot of success in that pick and roll action just from the hard hedge. Holmes is going to have the edge rolling there every single time. Help side's got to be there too. Hageman retreating. Joiner. Wrapped up, it is a roll. She's gonna have to throw it up, but she'll go to the rim. Almost this close. Two point lead for Indiana. Osmond out of the play. And Lots of go-to players yep. to put it in their hands. Right now, it is Hageman, the step, and the lay-in. So going for the quick two, and they're going to try and get a stop here. 
looking for Scalia. They go to Moore McNeil looking for the steal. Still no whistle to jump ball. Possession arrow here. Wow. That is huge. Swarming. Not one, not two, but three defenders on Moore McNeil. Absolutely disruptive, causing the jump ball. Michigan State will try and do it all over again. No. Join, joiner, their call for the foul, held on to Scalia. Up in gear zone one more time. Still got her eyes on Sarah Scalia, and they do get it into her. She loses it, and then comes the foul. And she steps to the free throw line and hits the first. Huge one to make it a two possession game. Timeout is called by Michigan State. Baron Halleck, the sophomore's the inbounder, into the hands of Hageman. She gets into the paint in a hurry. Can't drop in the layup, and more McNeil is fouled. So that was the same setup that they had in the last possession that they had in their side out with Hageman coming up. This time she refuses the ball screen. Ah, oh, and then misses the bunny. And then now sending more McNeil to the free throw line. I mean, this is tough. More McNeil, 74% this season. Hoosiers gathered up here. Assistant coach, Rhett Wiersba. Huge one from Moore McNeil. Sydney Parrish hopping on one leg in excitement. Huge free throws. Moore McNeil. No timeouts for the Spartans. They have to go the length of the floor. Time running out for Hageman, who drills it. Runs out. 94-91 ending in a flash, and the Hoosiers just escape. 